Alright guys, welcome back to F1 News and a big day in the Formula 1 world. McLaren confirming Daniel Ricciardo will not be driving for them next season. Lots of reaction to this from Daniel himself saying it's a bittersweet moment but a mutual decision they say between the parties. And also where will he go next? And also how much did it cost McLaren with the rumour that it could have cost them 15 to 20 million dollars if not more to end Ricciardo's deal early. Very much into it, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you and you as always. This just came up from McLaren. They have agreed mutually that he will leave the team at the end of the 2022 season one year before his contract was due to end. The team thanks Daniel for his contribution and his dedication, including that memorable win, of course, in Monza last year. This is the article they come out with here describing how, like, um, and even this, they're, they're not exactly roasting him here, but it is not exactly giving him the most glowing review. Daniel joined McLaren Racing in 2021 and has enjoyed some racing colours. You would have thought they might have said, you know, many or glamorised it a bit more but um, I mean, yeah, like they're not exactly holding any you know, hints back on why he's been released from the team. Some racing highlights, including, of course, the 2021 Italian Grand Prix in Monza, the only team to achieve a 1-2 last season with, uh, of course, Ricardo Norris. P1, P2 in that race. This is what Ricardo has to say. He's got more to say. We'll see here in a second. It's been a privilege to be a part of the McLaren Racing family for the last two seasons. After several months of discussions with Zach Brown and Andrea Seidel, we have decided to terminate my contract with the team early and agree to mutually parting ways at the end of the season. I will be announcing my own future plans in due course, but regardless of what this next chapter brings, I have no regrets and I'm proud of the effort and work I gave McLaren, especially the win in Monza last season. I've enjoyed working with everyone at McLaren, both trackside and back in Woking, and will be giving my all on and off the track as we enjoy the remainder of the season together. I've never been more motivated to compete and be a part of a sport that I love so much. I look forward to what comes next. So maybe implying there, Daniel, that like, um, like he intends to stay in Formula one. Whether that will happen or not, whether the offers become available to him, that is another question. But um, I think some teams at least probably still want him. Whether he does end up in F1 or decides to go elsewhere, IndyCar, you know, even NASCAR, back to Australia, there are options out there for him and definitely some have considered whether this could be the end of the line of his Formula 1 career because his McLaren stint has not been particularly good. The points so far this season, I think Lando Norris has 76, Ricardo has 19. Like, um, I think in most people's estimation is 19th or 20th ranked driver this season so far. It's not been a pretty time race. Last season, of course, he had the high in Monza, but outside of that, there hasn't been much to say on Ricardo the last year or so. And I know people have talked about, you know, um, okay, the car not suiting him. Norris even had to say a few words on that in a second, saying that actually, if anything, it suits Daniel better than it suits Orlando, at least in Norris's opinion. So, um, you know, he's kind of twisting the knife a little bit further. A couple of kind of nothing comments from Andreas and Zach Brown, of course, as you might expect here. And look, at the end of the day, all the other drivers they've had since 2013 haven't even won a Grand Prix. The only win they've had in the last decade, practically, has been by Dano Ricciardo, right? But, of course, like, the one win, the memories are great, but um, I mean, yeah, so far, of course, has not been good this season. Even Seidel admitted like, you know, they have to take some element of the blame here for this failed Ricciardo partnership, but um, they've decided to call it quits early, not even give him the, the last season of his contract, and um, well, pay him out to what probably is a substantial fee. They reckon, or people reckon over at Amos, that in the double-digit millions, I think we heard in the region of, you know, 20, 25 million dollars it might have cost them to end this deal early, move him on, and then also bring Piastri in. So, like, um, this entire separation is going to cost McLaren an awful lot of money, and um, they must feel like it's going to be significantly better for them to do this now, and um, effectively pay Ricardo's final year of his contract out, so Daniel gets all the cash, but um, he doesn't have to race, which I suppose is, you know, good and bad at the same time, right? Of course, he wants to compete, but um, it will not be McLaren that will have his services next year. It could, of course, be Alpine, that is an opportunity. But yes, Piastri will now go to McLaren. This is expected to be announced in the coming days. Of course, look, the Alpine Piastri situation is still not clear at all. They have even said that they do plan to take Piastri and his team to court over this whole shenanigans because Alpine believe they invested heavily in Piastri's development and as such, they are entitled to something as a result. I don't know if they are, but from a legal perspective, they believe they are, so we shall see. But McLaren are going to announce him, and um, that's the thing about Ricardo. There is no deal next acquired, right? There is no move guaranteed or agreed with any other team. We believe, of course, like he's talking to Alpine. He's probably potentially talking to Haas. Haas is the other team that apparently wants Ricardo or at least has shown interest in Ricardo. The Alpine thing is a bit of a question just because Mick Schumacher is an option for them as well. So, um, you know, apparently Dano is still in talks with Alpine. Mick Schumacher also an option for them and Piastri set to be announced very soon indeed. So, um, you know, I'll just share 
share this for you guys. I mean, it's about a two minute video here that Daniel puts out on his social medias. Like, um, I mean, yeah, pretty emotional stuff, right? It's sad to see the way his career has gone the last couple of seasons, but you can't really blame McLaren based on the results that they have seen. But at the same time, I'm sure this could have been handled better from their side as well. Hey everyone, uh, wanted to share some news. Uh, it's not great. Uh, it's bittersweet for sure, but uh, I think it's best you hear it from me. Uh, 2022 will be my last year with McLaren. Um, yeah, just obviously we put in a lot of effort on both sides, but just hasn't worked the way we wanted. Uh, so the team's decided to make a change for next year. And so we had a lot of discussions, but uh, in the end we mutually agreed that it was the right thing for both of us. Um, I will continue to do the rest of this year, absolutely. Um, and I'll continue to give it my all. Um, so uh, that's that's that. I think for the the future, what lies ahead, I'm not sure yet. Um, not sure yet, but uh, but we'll see. You know, I, I look back on this time with McLaren. I look back with a smile. I learned a lot about myself. I think things that will help me for the next step in my career. But I think just in general and in, in life, uh, you know, I think to. You know, from a results point of view, for sure, like to consistently get the, the results and that form that I was after, you know, wasn't wasn't always there. And, you know, made some weekends tough. Um, you know, I felt those absolutely. Um, but I also, you know, have many happy memories of my time at the team. And I think about Monza, you know, I think about standing on the top step. I think about, you know, bringing the the team their first win since 2012. You know, like that that sort of stuff was was awesome. And to see the smile on everyone's faces, to just be in that moment, you know, that's something I'll never forget. So, yeah, there's um there's a lot of good stuff to take from this as well. The sport, you know, I still love it. I still love it. You know, this this hasn't affected any of that. Um, I still have that that fire in me, that that belief in in my belly that I can do this at the highest level. Um, so yeah, all that stuff's still there. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say, appreciate everyone's support through the highs, lows, everything in between. Um, this isn't it for me. Um, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see what lies ahead. Um, but just want to say, appreciate you. Um, and this, as I was saying earlier, is Lando Norris kind of, you know, putting the knife in and twisting it a bit. There was an interview that came out on, I think, the Formula One channel, the, um, the Beyond the Grid, I think it's called, or whatever, interview that they do with some of the drivers. And uh, they were asking him about the car. And, okay, is the car better adapted to him than to Daniel Wright? Is that why he's outperforming his teammate? And he pushed back on this very heavily and saying, no, he doesn't see it that way at all. Like, he thinks he deserves more credit for his performances rather than people just saying, oh, you know, well, Daniel, you know, the car doesn't really suit him, right? Norris is saying it's by no means more adapted to me than it is to Daniel. It couldn't be more untrue, that statement. It is very unsuited, this car, to my driving style. I would say at the beginning of the season, it suited Daniel a lot more than it suited me, which is quite the statement, really, to say that, I mean, first of all, from Norris to his team and say, like, you guys don't know how to build a car. You know I was going to be your driver. Like, okay, you know, Norris is obviously very clearly now the number one driver, and next season, I'm sure Norris will be expecting them to deliver a car that actually computes with his driving style. So he's definitely having a statement about his team, because because like not many other like a um, number one drivers, let's just say, will say that you know their car doesn't suit them at all. Whereas apparently McLaren have managed to achieve that this season, but Norris has still delivered good results. He reckons that even Ricardo's style was better suited, and even Norris, I think, said recently that um usually he wouldn't be helping his teammate that much, but he's kind of had to in terms of you know what he should do, different ideas to how to get the most out of the car because Ricardo was struggling so badly that it was you know important for the team. But Norris said that if he was kind of properly fighting his teammate in the world championship standings then he wouldn't have given his team at too many pointers so yeah Norris has been pretty critical to be honest of Ricardo recently and this is another example of it and, um, and then what do you know a few hours later the confirmation happens from McLaren themselves this also to mention because this weekend's at least at either Spa or Monza the rumor had it that Piastri was going to do an FP1 run with Alpine now um, of course as it turns out the whole Alpine drama even though it's tough to say exactly what the contract situation looks like who he actually is signs to at the 
moment, Piastri, whether there's still this Alpine thing ongoing. Even Alpine have said they still plan to honour all its commitments. But um, I mean, yeah, of course, the plan has changed with giving Piastri the run in the car at FP1 this time around. So, um, you know, I suppose we'll see how that goes over the coming days. But yes, Piastri to McLaren and then either Ricardo to Alpine or elsewhere. And that is the question that uh, people will raise as a result of this. Some have suggested, even uh, I think um, Ralph Schumacher mentioned, that he doesn't expect Daniel Ricciardo to get another offer in Formula 1. I think his name is too valuable and his history is too significant for that to be the case. But um, at the same time, does Ricciardo want to join? Like, look, if Alpine decide they want Mick Schumacher and Haas want to get rid of Schumacher, then, you know, does Ricciardo really want to go and drive for Haas? Or would he just be like, well, you know, because of course he's all this confidence in his career that he can win a world driver's championship. Like, um, you know, he's in the Red Bull seats. Things were looking good. Got plenty of race wins. But like, um, it's never converted into anything substantial for him. And the opportunity of going to drive for Haas would probably not be the most exciting one. If he can get the Alpine seat, I feel like he's got to do that, right? Because there's a great revenge story opportunity there next season against McLaren. Like, um, he's obviously very hungry to still compete. If that's not really on the table, does he go to IndyCar, NASCAR, like, you know, some of the Australian sports, uh, you know, motorsports series? It's possible. Intrigue to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.